Hello and welcome to a, an emergency special episode of Stand Up. It's the Fox News fires Tucker Carlson, CNN fires Don Lemon, Bonanza extravaganza show. Let's do it. Stand up. Hello, my friends. One of the great things about having my own independent show and doing all of the jobs and knowing all of the people is I can just reach out to them and get them on pretty quickly and turn it around and get it posted to share with you to get more enlightened and informed on any number of topics. And I am just absolutely shocked and surprised by what happened today. It's being called a media massacre. The craziest day in cable news history. And as Politico says in their daily newsletter after all this broke, as a week-long celebration of the First Amendment and media coverage of Washington kicks off in advance of Saturday's White House Correspondents Association dinner, two of the major networks have cut ties with two of their most high-profile names. Fox News is splitting with Tucker Carlson. CNN has terminated Don Lemon. Both separations are effective immediately. The reaction inside the building at Fox, we're just learning of this like everyone else. Total surprise on my end. Fox News staffer told the Washington Post, on-air personality uh, added, this is major. It sends a message that even the guy with the highest ratings of all by a long shot doesn't get to survive this disaster. Fox Corp's stock is down about 3% from its morning opening price, a loss of $520 million in market value. I'm sure they'll make that back when they hire Thanos or an AR-15 sitting in a chair in front of an American flag to replace Tucker Carlson. It'll be something like that. But I thought I would go out and ask some of my favorite people to react to this just hours after it happened, and that's what I did. Coming up, my conversations, each about five to ten minutes long with Ellie Mistal of The Nation magazine, author, writer, professor Jared Yates Sexton joins me. I've got Danielle Moody, who is a broadcaster, commentator, writer, podcaster, professor of journalism, the great Jeff Jarvis, and one of his students at the grad school, Newmark School for Journalism, Juliet Jeske, whose project it's been to watch Fox News primetime, especially Tucker Carlson. All of those people, I called them all. They all jumped on with me immediately, and I was able to edit and turn it around and get it up by close to 6 p.m. the day it happened. And that, I hope, is what you're paying for, because that's what you get. I know a lot of smart people, and I can get them on the phone. I know how to press record and turn it around for you. So that's what I'm doing on today's very special episode of Stand Up the What am I calling it? Extravaganza? Bonanza? Well, whatever. Here we go. Let's start out with the captain, my captain, my king, my leader, my friend, Ellie Mestal, who happens to also be the nation magazine's justice correspondent and the author of the best-selling Allow Me to Retort, a black guy's guide to the Constitution, which if you don't have, you got to get. Always follow him on Twitter at Ellie NYC. He's also posting now on Spoutable and all of the rest. I was very happy he said yes and was available. Let's do it. Get it started right now. With Ellie Mistal. Ellie Mistal, you said, <laughs> you said on Twitter, uh, you're, and your house, it was like Scalia died. I literally, I woke my mother up, screaming down, down to her room. Uh, they fired Tucker Carlson. Um, um, what, a, what a day! <laughs> what a good day for 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 perseverance, you know. And I think that my my initial reaction to this is so wrapped up in the difficulties and the and the trials and tribulations of being a black person in media a black person on television a black person um on radio and at least in this moment outlasting tucker carlson outlasting <laughs> um a white supremacist who didn't just like promote white supremacist stories right like tucker gave them their talking points you know, and I, I've said this before. I, uh, certainly, I've said this before, kind of offline. But like, nothing was worse for me as a journalist, as a professional, than being clipped on Tucker Carlson's show. Yeah. Right? You could feel it immediately. Like, I would wake up in the morning and look at my emails or look at my phone and be like, "Man, I must have been on Tucker last night," because the level of hate and vitriol. It's just. It, it's so different than the other right wing media people, right? Like I can get clipped on Breitbart. I can get clipped on Hannity. You know, it's, it's not fun. Right. But, it, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Tucker's people, Tucker had this ability to kind of identify who should be attacked by his 
crazy, rabbit, violent fans. And then they at least go out and do the talking for him, right? Um, and so having that just removed from my life personally um, it is a boon uh, to say nothing of what I think it does for making American media just just that X percent less um, deplorable. How many times did he clip you? Did he t- did he mention you? I mean, usually it was just my face, right? Usually it was just my face with like a screen ca- cap. It, I think it was only one or two times where he m- mentioned me by name. Um, and, but you know, I'm pretty distinctive. I've got, yeah. I've got a distinctive look about me. Yeah. Um, and it was just, and it's just, you know, I, I don't want to oversell it. Like I don't, you know, it's not like I'd get clipped on Tucker and then bricks would start flying through my window. Right. It's not, uh, this is not 1967. Like I'm not try. I'm not trying to have that story or, 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 or put that out there into the world. Cause I don't want to have it, want it to happen. Right. But you know, there's a reason my kids can't open our mail. Right. There, there, there's a reason why they're not allowed to do that. Right. And part of that is is from the kinds of stuff Tucker Carlson's fans would send to your house. Um, and that was a I don't want to say it was unique, but it was certainly distinctive, even among the white wing white supremacist kind of media cabal that he runs with. As you said on Twitter, anybody can get on TV and tell white supremacists what they want to hear for an hour. But that show told them who to attack. Most other shows merely ride the wave of bigotry endemic to white conservative culture. That show was a wave machine. I'm glad it's gone. But can it be replaced pretty easily? Sure, sure. I mean, like, they, they, they grow these people on trees, right? Um, they don't grow them themselves, but they grow them on trees. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and look, there, there will be any number of white supremacists angling to take his place. I think I joked on Twitter. I bet Nick Fuentes is like updating his resume right now. I mean, like <laughs> uh, there, there will be replacements for sure. And remember, Tucker got the job when Bill O'Reilly finally got got right. uh, uh, booted. Right. And you, and from the perspective of, of, of you know, of, of Bill O'Reilly's filing, it's hard to imagine somebody being worse than Bill O'Reilly, right? Um, which is what Tucker uh, came out turned out to be. And so, you know, it's entirely possible that the person that they replace Tucker with will be even worse in some way um, um, than Tucker. And so, so yes, there there is that. Can we call it Pete the the Great Replacement Theory uh, <laughs> of Tucker Carlson? <laughs> like, like sure, that's going to happen, but. I, again, I, I come back to this idea that Tucker was also doing something uh, not unique, but distinct. Yeah. Right. And, and, and yeah. so like the, the he had a particular way, a particular way of kind of phrasing and couching um, and promulgating basic white supremacy arguments. Right. Like the, the difference between. David Duke's ideology and Tucker Carlson's ideology. It's 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 the Venn diagram is is a circle is a yeah, perfect yeah. circle. Right? <laughs> um, but Tucker had a particular way of doing it, had a particular yeah. I don't want to say charismatic because that's not the right word and it gives him too much credit. But he had a he had a particular way of turning the phrase that made it palatable to their people. Um, and again, the word I'm kind of stretching for is actionable by their people, right? Like he kind of yeah. plotted a course where they could spew the hate and the bigotry and the vitriol um, and get away with it, right? Whereas like when you listen to David Duke, you kind of know that like he's asking you to commit crime. <laughs> whether <laughs> whether or not you're going to commit crimes on his behalf or not, like that you understand <laughs> what the ask is, right? Um, Tucker always made it felt, feel like he wasn't asking you to commit crime. Just exercise your good American red blooded free speech and tan your testicles like it it, it. it put it in a in a he put it in a way that, quite frankly, I think, made the racism more accessible to the racist. Yeah, right? yeah. no, I think that's very well said. I think it's exactly what he did. All right. Well, any thoughts then on the other firing of the day? CNN fired Don Lemon. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I feel bad for Don, man. I mean, like that, <laughs> that brother was set up to fail, right? Is that right? They, they they took him out of a prime time solo news program and put his ass on 
at, you know, the, the crack of dawn in the morning with two other people, n- neither of whom he particularly knew or had particularly good chemistry with, right. one of which was a crazy conservative. That is them trying to get that brother into a situation where he was going to fail. He wasn't a morning person. I mean, Pete, you, you do enough meaning, you know, there's a, there's a certain kind of person that's a morning person, right? You're kind of gregarious and you're, yeah, but you got I energy. Think, I didn't think he was a night person either, to be honest. <laughs> I, look, I, <laughs> he, he, he was, a, he was a, a, what do you, what do you call himself? An openly black man, like <laughs> holding down a primetime spot on, 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 on cable television. That's not an easy job. When they switched him to the mornings, you could tell that the writing was on the wall. Now, I do think that he did things. They set him up to fail. He helped them, right? Like he did, he did things to put himself yeah. in a position in a situation where if they were trying to push him out, he was, he was already kind of like, Ooh, this cliff looks interesting. Let me talk some smack about Nikki Haley. As I stare over he this cliff a, uh... and see what happened, right? If they pushed him out over, he was already leaning a little bit too far. So like, I, I you know, you, I feel sorry for him in that way. It's like you ever uh, uh, like, you know, if like a black football coach gets fired. Right. And even if he wasn't like the coach of your team, you're just like, oh, man, they shouldn't shouldn't have done that to Denny Green. Right. Well, even though like you I, know, I see that, except for the other thing, like that, that really I think a lot about is sexism. And I feel like Don Lemon didn't like women. <laughs> you know, his I wouldn't have said that when he was on primetime. I wouldn't have said that at I night, right? I but saw like, a lot. I saw a lot, I feel. But, but when I saw, but the morning show was just like, yeah. like it, there were, there were bits, right? Where you're just like, Don, you realize the microphone's on, right? Like, you know, <laughs> all right, is there, understand okay. that we can hear you. <laughs> all right. Well then I'll let you go, but just, I do have to ask you to weigh in on this. Uh, Roy Wood, comedian Roy Wood Jr. has tweeted, and I wonder if you think there's any truth to this. They dropped that Tucker Carlson, Don Lemon news to distract y'all from the real truth. Bed Bath & Beyond coupons expire Wednesday. Stay woke. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond has declared bankruptcy. Do you think that's what this is all about? Roy, onto anything? If they do not give that man the Daily Show, I will riot. Like, that's that's actually when I put on the walking boots and take to the streets. Like, they need to give that man the Daily Show. He has earned it. Yeah. He is funny. He's He would take it to, to, to an interesting place. Um, I, I think he's great. Um, Emily Masai, I, I think you're also great. Thank you. I am well past my sell by date with bed bath and beyond man i i, <laughs> <laughs> Thank I am you. done with that um it's all it's all william sonoma for me from oh, here on. wow you really are doing well <laughs> thank you very much my friend thanks a lot pete there he goes ali Massal. read him at the nation magazine follow him on twitter get his book allow me to retort i was so happy that he was able to join me that was awesome very, very awesome. Love that guy. And speaking of people I love, I love all of my guests today. I was very happy that I caught Jared Yates Sexton before he left for the day. He was going to be on the road traveling, but I caught up with Jared. And of course, he is always awesome. You should read his Substack, listen to his podcast, read his books, all of the details for Jared in the show notes. If you haven't already subscribed and bought them yet, this was great. And I was psyched that he too answered my phone call. Thank you very much for joining me. It's an emergency conversation we need to have. I love it that whenever America's favorite white supremacist gets canned, it becomes an emergency conversation. It's, it, it really tells us where we are. I'll just say that. What does this mean? I have a lot of thoughts. I've already shared them. What are your thoughts? What does this mean? I, I, you know, here's the thing. I, I, I have to tell you, I think that this is so fascinating in so many different directions. Because one of the ways that Tucker Carlson became uh, Fox News' biggest draw was that he straddled the line between so-called mainstream Republican policy and thought and all all of that, the old institutionalists who support people like Mitch McConnell. But he also had one foot in like the white supremacist, white replacement, extreme right. Like he did a very good job of bringing those two audiences together and radicalizing one and, and mainstreaming the other. This move away from from him is going to be fascinating to see if Fox News has made the calculation that to they they need to move away from that stuff in order to bring back advertisers. Um, I have to tell you the phone calls today with people in consideration to replace Tucker Carlson, whoever ends up taking that job, it is going to tell us where they want to go, what they're interested in doing. It's also going to fracture the the right wing independent ecosystem 
Um, I got to tell you, if Ben Shapiro replaces them, it's 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 going to be the equivalent of a supernova swallowing the solar system in terms of particle streams. It's really hard to know what direction that they'll go. I've heard from my sources inside Fox, they're planning on placing, replacing him with an AR-15 in a chair. <laughs> well, hold on. The question is, is the AR-15 right wing enough? You know, can they can they put some some flair on it? Can they go ahead and dog whistle with the best of them? Yeah, it's got the picture of it. It's got a picture of a trans person on it. So it's really going to get huge ratings. So but I mean, Tucker Carlson will most likely go to another place, either create his own media, independent media outlet like many of us have or potentially run for president. So first and foremost, does he maintain his relevance? Is he still powerful and influential? Oh, absolutely. He does. The question at this point is because there's an entire ecosystem of right wing influencers. They'll appear on Fox, but they're outside of Fox. And those people have been champing at the bit to uh, exploit any weaknesses at Fox for years. They don't believe that they're ideologically in the right position. They think that they're old and creaking and they want to create an alternative. There are billions of dollars in this, in creating a Fox alternative. Um, Tucker Carlson, to me, has always seemed like an enterprising type. He enjoys creating his own structures, his own media stuff. I have to admit, and by the way, people say, well, his platform's gone. No, his platform isn't gone. You and I both know that independent media oftentimes actually outsizes old traditional creaking media. So I think think he's going to stay relevant. I think he'll either, like you said, he'll have to pick a political purpose. Undoubtedly, the phone calls he's taken today have been offers. They've been conversations about joining up and teaming up. And strategists and consultants who have already done shadow polls in all of the major states to figure out if he could beat Trump, if he could beat DeSantis, and whether or not it's even viable for him to try. Him losing the Fox News platform, I feel like, though, is a big deal. I can't quite articulate why. I think there's something different with going on YouTube or radio or podcast or Substack. There's just something different because Fox News gets kind of piped in there's a built-in audience he's there every night it's easy to find he's radicalized so many people he's done so much damage the question i think more specifically is can he do as much damage elsewhere as he has on the most watched cable news network so what i'm looking at is what i'm calling the mima and papa principle which (laughs) is 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 tucker carlson the one individual at fox news who is going to require Mima and Papa to learn how to install applications on their TV, right? Or is that what's going to push them to move away from Fox? And one of the things, and this is why Tucker Carlson was so su- successful, he was willing to speak to people's inherent prejudices in, a, in such a, a more, more overt way than a lot of Fox, right? The anti-Semitic, the white panic, all of that stuff. He was able to do that. That has led to a lot of these people getting on Breitbart, a lot of these people getting on the Daily Caller, you name it. Like the question is, can he move outside of Fox News and bring with him his subscription list, more or less? That remains to be seen. And there are doubts about whether or not that's going to be a part of this. But I have to tell you, Tucker Unchained in that sphere, uh, we just recorded for the Muckrake podcast. I think the best case scenario is that Fox News retains a chunk of his audience and that the alternative right wing sphere maintains theirs and the wall is just Im- impenetrable. If those things come together and if somehow or another an alternate structure is able to be formed, that's a really dangerous situation, right. particularly if it leads to a political run. We'll probably find out more specifics and maybe we already have. But do you have do you want to uh, guess as to what happened? Why? Fi- do, why- I want, do, do I just want to throw guesses at the wall? Um, I have to tell you, I, I, this basically more or less happened in one of three ways. Either Fox News was like, this is a corporate change. And that's what people in corporations love to do. Something like this happens. You want to go ahead and change things. Undoubtedly, they've had meetings like, can we make more money than Mike Lindell just giving us money for my pillow ads? Right. Like that is part of the issue is that Tucker Carlson made the, this brand particularly toxic. So was it a Fox News decision? Also, does the uh, unsafe working environment allegations, does that play in this? Um, Second of all, is is that it was a mutual understanding. And Tucker was like, this was great. Thanks for all the fish. I'm going to be over here doing my own thing. And by the way, there there is every reason to believe that both sides will benefit from this. Mm -hmm. And then there's a third, which is a wild card. We simply don't know what has happened. It will shake out. But I do not believe that even if there's something really, really ugly that's going to come down the pike, I think the Access Hollywood tape, everything else we've seen has shown that the right wing doesn't care about that stuff. 
So the question at this point is how I think the professional stuff and the political stuff shapes up. Uh, finally, do you, have you paid any attention to the Don Lemon firing? And what do you think about that? I, I, I think he, I've been very critical of him openly. I used to work with him and know him pretty well. And I think they should have gotten rid of him for a long, a long time ago for an, any number of reasons. Any thoughts on that and how uh, how much he must be pissed that he lost his job the same day Tucker Carlson lost his. So nobody's talking about Don Lemon, which is his whole issue that he wants to be the story, not cover the story. I have to imagine that the personal insult that you just laid out is probably what is first and foremost in, in that situation. Um, I, I have to tell you, CNN has been in flux now for months. And and by the way, like undoubtedly it's CNN, besides getting rid of Don Lemon, they are having conversations today because CNN has intentionally moved far right they're having conversations about, can we pick up some of Fox News's demographic? Can I mean, and it's not going to be Tucker Carlson. And by the way, I, I say that, and then by this afternoon, it'll be Tucker Carlson going to CNN, right? But they undoubtedly are having conversations about how do we go ahead and figure into that sort of a sphere. CNN wanted to get away from Don Lemon. Um, I don't know what's going to happen to Don. I really don't see what avenues are available for him at this point, but I'm a little bit shocked it didn't happen sooner as well. All right, bud. I know you got to get on the road. I appreciate you spending a few minutes with me, giving me your your quick take on this. And we'll do a longer one very soon, I hope, uh, when you're safe and sound somewhere. Absolutely. Take care out there, man. Yeah, there he goes. Jared Yates Sexton. Check out his Substack, Dispatches from a Collapsing State. Of course, get his new book, The Midnight Kingdom, A History of Power, Paranoia, and the Coming Crisis. And listen to his podcast, The Muckrake Podcast. All right. Well, now it's time to get to my third guest on this extravaganza bonanza. It's Danielle Moody, my old friend from Sirius XM and, of course, MSNBC. She co-hosts a show with Wajahat Wajada Ali, who will join me hopefully this week, as well as Democracy-ish, Woke AF, and the new abnormal on the Daily Beast Network. We love Danielle Moody. It's been way too long since I spoke to her, but I was really happy that she too was available and took my call for a few minutes to discuss all of this. Found out Tucker Carlson was fired, Danielle. I mean, were you surprised? I, I honestly, I was surprised. I literally thought that hell might have frozen over and that it was snowing in April in New York. This is shocking news because like many hardened, you know, people in media, I did not think that the Dominion case, and I think that it's a series of things, but I didn't think that the Dominion case and the settling of Fox were going to have on air repercussions. We don't know for certain if this is one of them, but it's definitely interesting timing on Fox's part to boot their highest rated, highest viewed person it's pretty shocking. When you think about influential people in media, specifically in right wing media, where the most influence, I think, occurs in general. Where would you put him? Was he the most influential person in all of right wing media? Was there anybody that comes real close? I mean, you know, I guess his other competitor is dead. So, yeah, um, you know, I think I think <laughs> that. You know, people thought that when Bill O'Reilly was fired from Fox, that that was going to take Fox down. Um, and then Tucker Carlson slithered into his spot. So I think that, you know, him, the hold that he has on MAGA, his desire to do deep dives into their culture war um, has turned him into a warrior for the right. And, you know, to watch this happen, I think signals to the rest of the Fox News anchors that if they can get rid of him, right, who they kept around and his only ads that he had on his show we're like the My Pillow guy. Everyone else abandoned his show back in 2017 when he made his comments about immigration uh, in the United States and it making the United States dirty. Um, and they didn't get rid of him, right? They didn't get rid of him then. So I think that money clearly for Fox is like what makes them hurt. But they're going to they stand to lose a lot of money not having him like they lost all this money, a billion dollars in the settlement. You know, he's the cash cow that could bring it back. So it makes me think that there's something we're just speculating that happened. Same thing with O'Reilly, right? Off mm -hmm. air, the things that they do off air, the things that they said off air. And certainly we found out through the Dominion hearing that he said one thing off air about the election and Donald Trump. 
and another on air. That was an inconsistency, but it looks like he might have just been a piece of shit to people, too. I mean, well, the thing in his private messages that were leaked in the in the case with Dominion, um, he referred to his bosses as fuckheads. Right. Like he basically said that, you know, they're fucking up the the network's credibility and his credibility. Like, OK, um, but I mean, he was clearly denigrating them. He never came into studio. You know, he is in a satellite studio up in Maine. So it's not as if he was interfacing with people like coming through the doors on a day to day basis. So I think that, you know, this is also a part of his own ego, thinking that he was bigger, that the Tucker Carlson brand was bigger than the network itself. And they were like, yes or no. Well, (laughs) we're about to find out how big the brand is. There's been a mood of jubilance. Jeff Jarvis saying hallelujah. Uh, Ellie Mistal was on here and he tweeted about it's like when Scalia died in my house. There seems to be a mood of jubilance, of triumph, of celebration, but it's also easy to see that he can go and do something very powerful mm-hmm. independently or even run for office. What do, you, what do you think? Is he is he more powerful than ever before now? I mean, I definitely think that we're not tap dancing on Tucker Carlson's grave like he uh, evil has multiple lives. Uh, particularly in media, if you are a white, straight, you know, angry, pseudo Christian man, uh, there are many, many of doors that will open for Tucker Carlson. And so, you know, whether he goes into podcasting, whether he starts a YouTube page, I don't think that he would run for office because he can't pull the numbers, you know, nation nationally. Right. But that doesn't say that he may not run for office somewhere in Maine, Hmm. but this is not the end of Tucker Carlson. So that's why I'm not so jubilant about, you know, this announcement. If it was the end of him, I'd be like, yay, democracy. But that's not what this is. He's just going to transition. Well, it's an important transition, and he'll be talking a lot about transitioning, I'm sure, in his own career. Correct. But he did so much damage. Is there any way to quantify the damage that he did? And, you know, Ellie very articulately kind of split the hair that anybody can do what he's doing, but he did it in a way that created tremendously bad damaging impact. Can you? Would you add anything to that? Do you agree with that? I agree wholeheartedly. I think that the things that he has said about undocumented people in this country, I think the things that he has said about the LGBTQ community, about black Americans, about Muslims, uh, like Tucker Carlson is just a one man hate machine with a, with a viewership that was over three million a day. Right. That were that were listening and hanging on to his every word. So the infection that he allowed to spread you know, from his show into, you know, into people's homes, um, it's not undo, you know, it's, it's, you can't undo it. Right. And, and I think that that, that's his legacy. You know, if it's just kind of weird that Tucker Carlson used to just shit on and make fun of Don Lemon. And on another day, Don Lemon would have been cheering just like the women at the view were because, you know, he was one of their targets, but Don Lemon lost his job today too. I'm happy about that. I think he was bad in so many different ways. Uh, but I want to get your thoughts on on Don Lemon's firing, which is much different than Tucker Carlson. Don Lemon didn't really have any influence anywhere. He was just bad. <laughs> in my opinion. I mean, 17 years at CNN, Don Lemon has gotten himself into trouble multiple times. And CNN has always backed him up. I think that his last comments were clearly the straw that broke the camel's back. When you offend half of your audience, right? And by saying that women outside of their 20s and 30s are out of their prime with your women co-hosts on the show. Who try to put the pin back in. They tried to help him. Like, that's not what you mean. And he's like, no, no, Google it. Right. And pop his collar about it. And thinks that that's okay. Like, you know, for all of the things about CNN, and I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see a revolving door um, because they're so thirsty for MAGA viewers in the way that they have brought on former Trump administration staff. But I think that the firing of Don Lemon was probably a long time coming. The both the thread with the both of them, Tucker Carlson and Don Lemon, is their egos. They both thought that they were bigger than the network that they were on. Uh, um, and I think that this is one of those aha, like eye opening moments. And 
I don't know what Don Lemon thought he was doing by breaking his own news via Twitter and thought that maybe people were going to rush to his aid and be like, how could they get rid of him and not tell him first? When I'm like, when you're pulled from the air <laughs> for a while and the CEO of the company says that the age of Don, the age that brought in Don Lemon is over uh, at, a, at an event, that's pre- pretty much like shots fired. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, the CEO was at an event and largely, I I guess that it didn't catch wind because the conversation was about like the changing wave of media, like the media that brought in Don Lemon 17 years ago is not the same that it is now. But now in hindsight, you're like, oh, foreshadowing. Got it. Well, you mentioned maybe he thought his friends were going to come to his aid. I think the problem, because I worked with him at CNN, is that he didn't make any friends. Oh, That's the problem. You know, there are a lot of people there that were nice to him because you have to be nice to somebody who's on the air, but uh, are are also pretty happy. I know a few because he's gone. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, here's the thing. Like, it doesn't um, help to be a dick, right? Like, you know, it only it goes for for so long. I mean, Clearly, we we saw, you know, the downfall of Matt Lauer, another man that thought that he was bigger than the network brought in, you know, tens of millions of dollars. Um, in the end, it comes to bite you back in the ass. Well, the thing that I was always the elephant in the room was that he's a, a, a beautiful black gay man. And the thing that I was always kind of outraged about was, do you know how many beautiful black gay men I know that are 20 <laughs> times smarter than Don Lemon, like and better and less sexist? I mean, like. If that's the, the 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 lane that you want to fill, I'm actually fine with it. I think that's great. I think that, you know, your intersectionality, diversity is good in your corporate media outlet. But th- there are a lot way cooler, smarter guys than him, if that's the lane you want to be in. That was my thought. I mean, and uh, I concur. Like, you know, I, I'm a person who loves, you know, smart people who put on challenging interviews and you know, really inform their viewers. And I think that Don Lemon, just like Tucker Carlson, they're for entertainment purposes only. This is a really important issue. I'm really glad that I got your takes on it. And there are so many other important issues that I want to get your takes on. Let's do it again and longer like the old days soon. I really appreciate you joining me, Danielle. Thanks, Pete. Danielle Moody, check her out. All of her podcasts and information are in the show notes. Go look and follow her on the socials. It was great catching up with Danielle. Look forward to talking to her again. Two more great guests joining me on today's Extravaganza Bonanza about Tucker Carlson, Don Lemon, and the big media massacre had to talk with media expert, journalism expert, the great Jeff Jarvis, who, of course, is on all the social medias. You should follow him. You should listen to him. You should read him. We love Jeff Jarvis. And I was very grateful that he was able to join me. So let's do it right now with Jeff Jarvis, Professor. Well, I couldn't have a conversation about both Tucker Carlson and Don Lemon being axed on the same day without asking Jeff Jarvis, top of my list. Thank you for agreeing to do this on short notice. What are your thoughts? What do you think? Oh, my goodness. It's Christmas. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. <laughs> he wants not to celebrate about, about Tucker Carlson. Uh, I'm sure there's more nefarious things under the surface here. The Murdochs are still evil. They are still the most malign influence in all of English-speaking democracy. There is still more bad they will do. But still, how can you not have schadenfreude aplenty for all the right-wing fascists who were try- crying snowflake tears today, losing their boy, Tucker. They know, well, okay, what about the idea that if you strike me down now, I'll be pow- more powerful than ever before? Yeah, he's still going to be there no matter what. He's going to do what he does. Uh, uh, you know, the blaze was already offered him a job this morning on, on the air. Um yeah, he'll be somewhere doing some bad thing. But the thing about Tucker Carlson, I think, somebody said today something about his ideology. There's no ideology to Tucker Carlson. There's no one more opportunistic than he is. He'll, you know, he could be hired by MSC, NBC tomorrow and act like Joe Scarborough the next day. 
he'll be whatever he needs to be as a chame- a political and moral chameleon and do whatever it is that makes him money. So yeah, he'll find other things to do. It could well be RT. I wouldn't be surprised at that. It could be his own show. It could be, you know, somebody awful like um, Substack or other folks could hire him and pay him a huge amount of money to write something just because he'll draw attention in this attention-based economy. That's the corruption of the entire system of media. But does he have as much power anywhere as he does at Fox? And what does Fox lose? Uh, Tucker Carlson does not have as much power as Fox. Fox is not Tucker Carlson, never was. It is the Murdochs. It is the Murdochs who own the power that they have in that. And people are replaceable. Look how often they replaced him. Look who Tucker Carlson replaced in time. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. So um, I, I think that he's an interchangeable chess piece for them. And he'll go off and do other things, just like the blaze exists, he'll exist, and he'll get quoted on Twitter, and Donald Trump will uh, forgive him for his uh, heresy, um, whatever. Now, the, the big question is, would he actually run for office? What do you think? Is he, do you think that he uh, may think about it? And if he did, how would he do? What, thoughts on that? I don't think he actually wants to do the job and do the work, but neither does Marjorie Taylor Greene, so that doesn't matter. I think in the right district, he could win and uh, make that his platform. He wouldn't make money the way he makes it now. The question is, how much does greed alone motivate him versus power? Yes, that's the question. It's about power. And it's not a, it's not a, a thing that's not necessarily uh, inevitable, leaving media going into politics. It happens sometimes, but it's not certainly not a slam dunk that he would do that for obvious reasons. I think a couple of you just mentioned. We don't really know why this happened yet. The LA Times says it could be because of the Abby Goldman uh, suit. Um, It could be about what he said about his bosses uh, that came out during Dominion. It could be about Dominion. It could be an excuse from that. We don't really know what, uh, you know, the LA Times said it came straight from Rupert, but what doesn't there? Right. All right. And what about the other firing that didn't get as much attention, much to his chagrin? I'm sure he's pissed that he got fired in the same day Tucker Carlson did. Don Lemon, out at CNN, Jarvis. Yeah, Don Lemon, I, I, I think it's another bad Chris Licht move at, at CNN. They got rid of Brian Stelter because he dared to be a little controversial. And same with Don Lemon. Now, I always thought that Don Lemon could be at times a goofball. And I don't think his opinions were necessarily the most thought through on broadcast media, but he was uh, a caring, I think, decent broadcaster. And I, uh, they played around with him and they put him in the slot in the morning and then, and then Lick just dumps him like a, like a microphone and does so on ceremoniously. And of course, Don, Don Lemon, uh, tweeted with an odd colored font, uh, today that he had been, uh, terminated and said that they didn't have the courtesy to call him. And then CNN in a really snippy move said back, well, that's not true. He had, he had the offer of a meeting with management. Well, after his agent, I'm sure, already knew he was gone or that's why they're going to call him in. And so it was ridiculous. Uh, Chris Licht is just I saw him at a semaphore event about a week ago on media, and he's just oily. Um, he's another chame- he's another management chameleon. He'll he'll yeah. shift himself into whatever is needed. Yeah. I think CNN is going to get worse and worse. A uh, Gail King primetime. OK, OK. Uh, being an Oprah's friend takes you anywhere on, on Earth, it seems. So I don't know. I was disappointed in MSNBC that they did hardly anything on it until Katie Tour was on this afternoon. And she finally devoted the lead of the show to it. Thank goodness. This is a big story in media. Yeah. Add to that, Jeff Shell, the president of, of, of NBC, uh, Universal, fired because he had a, um, uh, an affair alleged with a, uh, an on-air talent. Uh, it's always looking like succession here. Um, and big old mass media is a corrupt enterprise all around. Um, but I'll watch MSNBC tonight because I can't wait to see what Rachel has to say about yeah, it. Yeah, I watched the one o'clock hour at CNN. I don't think they mentioned Tucker Carlson and, of course, not Don Lemon. John King did just before that mention Don Lemon uh, and they had covered Tucker Carlson. But I thought it was a weird thing. It's a huge story. The The consequences sp- specifically of Tucker Carlson not being there are massive. They are massive. In my opinion, who do you think could be the uh, evil replacement for him? Well, it's I think it's between Will Kane and Thanos. I think it's I between Will Kane. Oh, is this this is a, this is a comic book reference? See, I'm, I'm too old. I think it's between Will Kane and Victor Orban. <laughs> That's it's, better. I can deal it's with that. Either one. Will Kane and a uh, rifle. <laughs> 
It it could be various ex politicians too, I guess. Yeah, or, no, that, that's it. It'll be. I mean, maybe Don Lemon and and uh, Tucker Carlson will do a show together. Is there any possibility of that crossfire too, man? Yeah, yeah. I was, you're right. I was I didn't, replaying uh, uh, John Stewart's scolding of of Tucker Carlson again for good old times' sake. I bet you they'll rotate that hour just like they did the seven o'clock hour. Remember they did that and a bunch of guys auditioned. Jesse Waters got the spot in the end, but Will Kane auditioned. Brian, uh, somebody else, a couple of people auditioned. I bet you they'll do that just for ratings too. They'll have a rotating. And they'll put Just anybody like the in there. Doing it. By the way, the Daily Show is doing it, I think, quite successfully. Yeah. Have you watched? Y- yes, it works. And that's why I think yeah. they, they could do something similar. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Jeff, I really appreciate your thoughts on this. As always, thank you for joining me. Thank you, boss. Yeah, there he goes. Jeff Jarvis. Go let him know that you heard him here. And always so grateful when he's available. Love talking with him. And finally, now, one of his students, he told me about Juliet Jeske's work. She's a re- research associate at the Toe Knight Center News Integrity Initiative at the Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism, where, of course, Jeff is a professor. You can find her at Decoding Fox News. She's an expert on the Proud Boys, Juliet Jeske blog dot com, a podcast, a Substack, and uh, an awesome person. Really love talking to her. Let's get to it right now. Juliet Jeske. All right. Juliet Jeske joins me now. And you were one of the first people I thought of when, when I heard of the passing of Tuckums, Tucker Carlson. Juliet, wh- where were you? How did you find out? What does this mean for your life and work? <laughs> I was out of town this past weekend for a family event. And so I was sleeping and I got woken up with ding, 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 ding on my phone. And I went, <laughs> Sur- I'm never sleeping again. Sur- so. <laughs> Surprised, right? <laughs> I was blown away. Yeah. Tucker is the second highest ratings draw for Fox News. So this is shocking. It is actually shocking. Remind people uh, kind of a little bit about your work as it pertains to Tucker Carlson's show. Um, I basically cover 15 hours of Fox News every single week and I analyze it, and do a newsletter podcast. And so I do the primetime shows on a rotating basis. So I get Tucker about every four weeks. He's like one in four. Sometimes I do double up on him because he'll be just so off the wall that I would do two weeks in a row of Tucker. Or I also catch extra Tucker. I did this a week. I went back and got two episodes of Tucker to add to my, the 15 hours I already had. Uh, and what would you say, I mean, that his impact was? There's That's, I know, an answer that you could give and take uh, a very long time to 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 look into and talk about you tweeted a lot about like the you know the masculinity stuff and obviously the anti woman stuff gender stuff but i mean you could go off on a lot of different avenues of hatred what do you think his legacy was or you know talk a little bit about the impact that you that he ha- had on, and on what Tucker Carlson is the most blatant white supremacist on Fox News he's not hide it i'm actually editing a clip for that right now he is sort of like entry level white supremacy, I think, for a lot of Americans because he sort of dog whistles it up. He's not as blatant, but I've seen uh, avowed white a nationalist like Nick Fuentes praise him and say he's doing such a great job on Fox. He can't come out right out and say it, but he's right on the edge. And I have a clip of that. I'm going to put up on Twitter and like as soon as this interview's over. So th- yeah, he's just entry level white supremacy, and he his views are dangerous. He also encourages violence in an indirect way talks about like getting ready and revolution and save your guns get your guns stuff like that he's made comments like that frequently also big on the replacement theory he's now going and he uses terms like invasion the great replacement theory being if you're not aware uh, or familiar with it is that he believes and promotes this conspiracy theory that actually got started in europe that uh white americans are being replaced intentionally by the government by uh basically minorities like you basically say Latinos and uh, people who are not white to change the culture, to become more subservient and dependent on the government and to radically change the country. That's his, uh, and he openly promotes this. He's been promoting this for some time now. He even uses the term, the great replacement. Like it's not, it's not subtle at all. You've followed the uh, Fox News Dominion case pretty closely. I know you're not a, a legal expert and I know we don't know exactly what happened here, but is there anything you'd speculate on what did happen here? Why did the guy who you started this conversation by saying he's the leading ratings getter, hence he's the breadwinner of all the Fox News personalities, why fire him? I think because he was mentioned quite a bit in the Dominion uh, legal briefs about 
he was caught. There was text messages and emails where he said he hated uh, Trump. He he thought Trump was a demonic force and that he hated him passionately. And that did get leaked out. And who knows how many Fox viewers actually read that or saw that or got any of that in. But that was part of it. And I think he also was very there's a lot of evidence in the Dominion briefs that Tucker was more concerned about ratings and keeping the viewers happy than reporting truth. Tucker's also been the subject of a defamation uh, lawsuit in the past, and that was the Seth Rich family, uh, right. because he was promoting that uh, uh, conspiracy theory that Seth Rich was murdered to somehow cover up, you know, this many sins of Hillary Clinton. Right. Uh, when all that was debunked, he was just a victim of crime. So I think that and probably, you know, I don't know, but I would guess that when management basically sat these people down and I mean, all of these top heads at Fox and said, you really need to rein this in. You can't keep just going off and making stuff up and, you know, citing stuff with no re- you know sources or anything, which they do all the time. He probably blew up and, you know, maybe was very angry about it. And, and yeah, cause apparently this, they apparently, according to media matters, Angelo uh, tweeted something about this morning. He's the CEO at media matters where this morning they were promoting an interview that was going to be on Tucker Carlson tonight. And so, and then at noon, he yanked. So something happened. We don't know, but it was very abrupt. There was no like, oh, there are negotiations or anything like that. Yeah. And apparently Tucker Carlson, I just read, was surpri- totally surprised. I believe it. And uh, he also produces quite a bit of content for Fox Nation, which is their streaming service, which is very popular. He has uh, Tucker Carlson originals and he just churns them out. And they're, you know, the death of men, that goofy one with the testicle tanning was a Tucker Carlson tonight original. He just did one about eating bugs, uh, UFOs and, you know, Hunter Biden. And he just like, it's like his mill. So uh, what I want to say, though, uh, definitely that scares the heck out of me with him is he has, I don't know if Fox owns it or if Tucker Carlson owns it. If he was smart, he put his own money into it. But there is a studio in Maine that he's been shooting his show out of for a while, like for pre-pandemic, apparently. Yeah. He was shooting his own show out of it. So he would do that and he'd never tell his audience, oh, by the way, I'm in Maine. So if he if he owns that or if he has control over that, he can just pick up, get an investor and start producing his own garbage, kind of like InfoWars, which oh, yeah. I think he'll get worse if he has nothing holding him in. Uh, I, I don't know. He w- definitely won't be making his Fox salary, which was rumored to be $25 million a year. Um, he won't start off making that. But who knows? I mean, he could start selling supplements. He could become basically Alex Jones, too. That's what I'm worried about right now. We- weirdly, I wasn't cheering when I found out he got fired. I just went, oh, my God. Like, like what is he going to turn into? Is he going to get worse? That's the first thing I thought of. Do you think Fox News will get worse? What do you think happens at 8 o'clock hour and your nights? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I think they might push uh, Jesse Waters into that time slot because he was kind of underneath Tucker, usually in the ratings, although it varies. And Jesse Waters isn't nearly as good at weaving conspiracy theories. Right. And no, he's terrible. He's Tucker. He's kind of yeah. dumb and just kind of tries to be Tucker, but he's not nearly as good at it. Uh, Hannity is kind of on the decline. Ingram doesn't get the ratings as well as she used to. So I have no idea what they're going to do. They they could put a new talent in there, although I have no idea who that would be. Um, it's 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 a very crazy time. I I think that my guess is that Fox News is really hurting from making this huge payout. Yeah. Uh, I just got this while we were talking. Fox News replaced Tucker Carlson with Don Lemon. What are your thoughts on that? Seriously, no. <laughs> that would be like, although I you know Don Lemon getting fired, I was like. Eh. I was like, that should have happened a while ago. What are, exactly, I agree. One of them was far <laughs> more impactful. The, the one of them was a lot, obviously a lot more impactful because, you know, Tucker Carlson was a lot more consequential and had such a bigger impact. I mean, he ruled the Republican Party, arguably. He was a, but, he was a kingmaker and, and Don Lemon was, uh, you know, just kind of an embarrassing, sad sack, in my opinion. And yeah, way overdue to let him go. That's for sure. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. I was uh, like, well, what else? Okay. Anything else, Julie? Any other reactions to this news today? It's such a big deal. I, I don't know how to. That's why I wanted to talk to you and, and a few others, because I just don't know how to kind of quantify the impact. I think this has such an impact. And, you know, as much as anybody. 
in the short term, I think it's good because he will lose that audience. And he was incredibly influential, but I'm terrified about what he's going to turn into. Do, I'm, I'm worried. Do his viewers, and this is kind of a serious question and kind of a joke, the people who watch Fox News at 8 p.m., do they know how to find him somewhere else? If he's on a podcast or YouTube or Substack, can they find that? Tucker got the... They're very large- old and out of touch, I think, some of them. He, he got the largest share of the youngest voters on the network. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's part of the reason why he got paid so much and part of the reason why he was... The Five is actually the number one rated show on... Uh, which I'm missing right now, but I'll get... <laughs> Today is hell. <laughs> Today is hell for me. But anyway, he... Um, he got the largest share of prime time of the young voters. Yeah. I mean, young viewers, I should say. Uh, you're correct in that the entire audience skews very, very old. Um, like, not the oldest on cable news, but definitely senior age, definitely retired people who may not know how to use technology. However, he does attract younger viewers and they definitely know how to use, they know, they know how to get them on Fox Nation. So I, I am worried that he's going to collaborate with another like far, far right uh, winger in media. And they're going to come out with their own like goofy uh, Infowars style channel. And then the only thing that will take him down is civil lawsuits. And I kind of hope that that's what happens. I cannot stand the man. And I think he's incredibly dangerous for our country. Uh, Well said and great work covering him. And I'm glad that you don't have to, at least uh, (laughs) for now. Yeah, for now. I'll let you get back to your very busy work. And I so appreciate you and look forward to seeing whatever uh, you're going to be posting about this. It should be good. It already has been. Okay, thanks so much. Thanks, Juliet. All right, there you go. An hour of reaction, basically, on all of this news and why it matters from some of the best people we know and can find and can get on the air. If you appreciate me doing that and want to hear more of it, then please let me know. Stand up with Pete at gmail.com. And of course, consider a subscription because there's not too many people that know as many people as I do and get them on and hit record and turn it around. And there and lies the value of you're as little as $5 a month. So sign up now, patreon.com slash Pete Dominic. Thanks again to Ellie Mistal, Jared Yates Sexton, Danielle Moody, Jeff Jarvis, and Juliet Jusky. Please go let them know that you heard them here on the show. Reply to my tweet, which will copy all of them if it makes it easier. And that's it. As always, John Carroll sings to us on the way out as he does on the way in. And I will have a regular show with Ryan Bussey, the gun industry whistleblower, joining me tomorrow. But for tonight, I'm Pete Dominic, and this has been a Stand Up with Pete Dominic special production. Thank you for listening. Tell your friends. Rate and review us at Apple and Spotify. Bye-bye. On your fence, even if it ain't a very friendly audience, well, they'll begin to listen when you start making sense and you stand up, stand up. No need to point your rifle to defend your town, just stand up, stand up. You know they can't deny you what you're laying down, boy, you better stand up, stand up. Show your face of every color, yellow, black, red, and brown. Where every lost child will finally be found There's only one thing to do before we stand our ground And that's stand up, stand up Well, the founding fathers saw a land for all They had to stand up, they had to stand up They had a keen imagination for a crystal ball Drawing all the plans of stand up But all they had to go on was the time they were in with other causes for laws And since they weren't even sin They knew that change was gonna come Before the change could begin They had to stand up All right, they had to stand up We got to stand up We got to look the devil square in the eye We got to let him know It's his time to go To make it clear and all we hear is a lie Cost of freedom never grow on a spit.
can see him flee the scene of that experiment. If you stand up, stand all right, up. we got to speak up, we got to reach up and raise your voice in every way you know how. Don't be toes up, you got to show up. Ain't no better time to do it but now. No need to pledge allegiance to no ones and try to rise up. Show obedience to the voice inside and listen well and it'll tell you not to run and hide. It says stand up. Stand oh, up. you got to stand up. Stand up.